I'm made of atoms, so are you. So is this table, and there are atoms in the air, but they are all too small to see. If we could see atoms, they would look something like this. In the centre, little particles called protons and neutrons, and whizzing around the outside at great speed, even smaller particles called electrons. Now, atoms vary enormously in size, from the tiniest ones called hydrogen atoms, one proton in the middle, one electron around the outside, through to things like uranium, which have dozens of protons and neutrons in the middle and dozens of electrons around the outside. I thought it might be fun if we built up a model of a uranium atom using this thing. You might say, wait a minute, that looks like a mouse trap. Yes, it is. But it's going to represent a uranium atom. Let's set the trap. I'll bend the catching frame backwards, put the bent wire over the top and tuck it into the cheese trigger. I've stored energy in that now. It's set. Waiting for a little mouse to come along and nibble the cheese. You want to see it go off? Well, I'm not that silly. I'll use a pen to represent the mouse. Here comes the mouse. One, two, three, four. Look at that. That's the end of the mouse. I'll set it again, but this time I'll add something to it. Mouse trap is now set. That represents a uranium atom. And these two ping pong balls represent two of the neutrons in a uranium atom. Now, if another neutron bombards a ura uranium atom under certain conditions, it can actually cause a lot of energy to be released. And we can represent all this by having another ping pong ball come in and hit the mousetrap where? You're right, on the cheese trigger. When that happens, there'll be a large release of energy and you should see something happen to those two ping pong balls. You ready? One, two, three. Look at that, ping pong balls flying everywhere. Wouldn't it be fun if we had a couple of other mouse traps set up in the studio so that the flying ping pong balls landed on those? Then we'd have more ping pong balls flying in the air and more and more and more. It'd be something like what's happening in this diagram here. It's called release of nuclear energy because when one uranium atom is split by a neutron, it releases, if it releases two or more neutrons, they can split more uranium atoms and more and more and more. Eventually we get what's called a chain reaction and a huge amount of energy is released. How could we build up a model of this? Well, we'd need a whole bunch of mousetraps all set up and ready with ping pong balls. Have you seen anything like that? If you've been observant, you've seen the aquarium next to me and it has in it, let's see, 19 mousetraps. How many ping pong balls? 38. All set, ready to go. How many ping pong balls do we need to drop in there to set off all 19 mousetraps? If you said 19, that would do it, but we could also do it with just one ping pong ball. Because if that sets off the first mousetrap, two ping pong balls will fly in the air. They could set off two more, then four in the air, then eight, 16, and so on. Within a very short space of time, we could release all of the stored up energy in that aquarium. Should we try it out? All right, here we go. I'll lift the lid and I'll aim the ping pong ball above this mouse trap in the corner. And we'll have a countdown. Want to join me? From 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. <laughs> wow, were you ready for that? I hope you didn't blink, because if you blinked, you may have missed the lot, the release of energy in a fraction of a second. And if you think that's a lot of energy being released, just look at it in slow motion. Imagine what happens in a real nuclear reaction. Not 19, but millions of uranium atoms all releasing their energy, a huge chain reaction. And it's this that's responsible for atomic explosions. That's why so much energy is released when that happens. Also, these sort of reactions are responsible for the controlled use of nuclear energy, the sort of thing that happens in power stations, where the energy released is used to boil water, to generate steam, to drive electric turbines. And when that happens, it must be controlled very carefully to keep the whole operation safe. So, next time you hear about nuclear energy and chain reactions, think of mousetraps. traps.